in the workshop, cleaning and preparing the boxwood lathe for painting, some workshop views after painting the floor, and the painting of the boxwood commences. This is my old boxwood lathe that came out of a factory. It's been painted twice before, and it's been painted badly twice before. There are many drips and runs and sags in the paint, as well as the paint is now chipped and some of it's missing entirely. Even my action man deserter hung from the shelf has turned his back on it. I've been doing some mechanical work to it. I've fitted new belts and adjusted the tension, and it's working very well. I enlisted the help of a friend of mine, Mr Rob Metcalf, to clean it, because I just really did not have the time. After giving the box for a thorough clean to get it ready for painting, Rob is going to paint the floor. While my friend Rob was doing this job, I wasn't even in the workshop. Because the current COVID-19 lockdown restrictions say that we can't meet up inside. When I made this video, the camera was by the door, and I was more or less stood outside. Rob is cleaning the boxford using my preferred method of methylated spirit applied with scotch Bright. The brush is just to get into the harder to reach corners. This job is thoroughly tedious at best, and it took a much longer time than I'm showing in the video to get the boxford clean and ready for painting. And as usual, to prevent any viewers from becoming comatose, I'm about to speed up the video. The video is now running at four times normal speed, and you can see how thorough Rob is at the cleaning job. I think I speeded the video up at this point. It's difficult to tell. Possibly it could be the fumes of the methylated spirit making Rob work faster. The doors were removed, and thankfully they just lift off. And now he's putting the parts that were in the door into the cupboard. Before I paint this lathe cabinet, I'm going to remove the contactor and the controller on the front. This safety cover that fits over the change wheels really does need some attention. After Rob had cleaned this part, he started to paint the floor. I didn't go into the workshop until the next day. What a transformation! And this is only the first coat. Rob's coming back next week to give it another coat, possibly Thursday. I'm going to pan the camera around the workshop so you can see what a difference it's made having the floor painted. There's a crack in the concrete that's been there for a long time. I'm going to address this before Rob returns on Thursday. The problem was we filled the outer part of the workshop with all the stuff from inside the workshop and we couldn't get to the shelves where the filler was. My workshop has far too much stuff in it for the size of it. And for that reason I'm going to get rid of some of it and make more room. The paint on the floor is not fully dry in places. This is what my chair did to it. Not a big problem. After today I will repaint this area of the floor and I'll leave it for two or three days. Well at least two anyway. This paint reflects the light quite well and it makes the old smart and brown look very smart indeed. It's going to be a real pity to get it dirty. The piece of brass has arrived for the control panel, so that's one job I'll be doing very soon. Trouble is, there isn't currently any room at all on my workbench. So I made a bit of space on the corner of the table, and here I'm rubbing down one of the doors for the boxford. The paint job on this boxford is diabolical. There are many, many drips, and what I'm doing at the moment is sanding them off. As I mentioned, this lathe spent many years in a factory doing very menial tasks. And both of the coats of paint were probably done by young apprentices. This is never going to look really good. It's a very old lathe and it's not worth putting the time and effort into it. All I want to do really is just tidy it up. Even on the top slide and the cross slide there's paint where it shouldn't be. I removed the paint entirely on the compound slide with my Proxon angle grinder fitted with a flapper wheel. I filled the big chunks of paint missing from this cover using JB Weld, and here I'm flattening it off using some emery cloth. But I'm really not doing the best job I possibly could do. It isn't worth it, I don't have the time. And in between all this, I still need to make the videos. To do this job properly, the series would be Episode 93, painting yet another part of the Boxford, so I don't think I'll go there. I'm just sanding the worst bits, and it will look okay when it's done. And once the sanding was over, I used a cloth with a little bit of cellulose thinner, 
also known as lacquer thinner, to carefully remove the rest of the grime. And that's it for the narrative for this video. I really can't think of anything else to say. I'm going to start the painting process and I'm going to place this part on a box to lift it up off the bench. I bought a tin of paint via the auction site that we all know and love. I've never used this brand of paint before. I'm hoping it's going to be okay. And what colour is it? Well, it's the same colour that the paint Colchester lathes with. It's like a sort of off-white with a hint of grey. I'm not sure whether it's the right colour, but I will, of course, find out in the fullness of time. When I open the tin, it does look very white, but I'll see what it looks like when it's on. It's actually called Ash Grey. And that's it for the narrative. I'd just like to say the usual, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. This music is from 2017, and I call it Painting a Boxford Lathe, whilst my feet are sticking to the concrete floor that's just been painted. Please take the time to visit my main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.